of suicide, poverty, domestic violence, and other dysfunctions seek to destroy and separate. We choose to tangata, to stand tall, stand together, regardless of our backgrounds or belief system. We as the people of New Zealand choose to stand for our people, to bring hope, to bring the solution. We say you are valued, you are loved, you matter. We stand because we care. Kia ora everybody, good evening, welcome to Open Up Bro, Man Up to Tangata. Tonight on this uh, one hour special, we're going to open up about uh, a very destructive uh, drug. It's caused a lot of division, destroyed families, and tear, tears apart uh, relationships, and just the pollution in our society. That's right, methamphetamine, pee, crack. It's time to open up about this, and uh, we've got a very strong panel tonight that have had a lot of experience. Had... Uh, uh, stories also relating to this uh, this topic tonight. One thing I want to say from the outset is that tonight, because of this one hour special, we want to give you the opportunity as the viewer. Maybe you're sitting at home and struggling with this, uh, this particular topic. I just want to let you know that uh, it's okay. We're not necessarily, uh, you know, uh, university scholars. We're not, uh, we haven't got degrees or doctorates, but I tell you what, we've got life experience, mm, and that yeah, counts yeah. for something tonight. And I just want to let you know, have the confidence tonight to, to maybe ask questions and post them up on this uh, Facebook Live feed. Because of the one hour at the end, we're going to uh, put some of those questions to the panel and uh, discuss those questions, potentially bring the answer and the solution to this wicked problem. Uh, I just want to say it like this, I want to class uh, methamphetamine as a thief, a robber, a stealer and a destroyer of life. We are, we are in a man up to tangata, us as men, we are dead set against methamphetamine and synthetics and drugs and the trade of it, the use of it. Uh, we to tangata and we stand against it tonight. Uh, we want to bring a message that comes very clear to our nation that we want to see this drug eradicated. If it takes us to influence one man at a time, one family at a time, we are prepared to do it. We're prepared to stand on the street corner. We're prepared to open up our lives here tonight, live on this set, uh, to bring, hopefully, some truth yeah. and uh, destroy this enemy, this thief, methamphetamine. So I look forward to your contributions tonight. Start uh, uh, interacting with us now as I introduce uh, our panel um, right here now. So uh, just... Thank you very much. We're going to introduce you to our panel tonight. Uh, thank you, brothers, for being here. Uh, once again, Toko and Kaiwi, uh, always awesome to have you here. And our special guest here, uh, Ed and uh, Billy. So kia ora, everybody. Good to have you on board tonight. And thank you for uh, awesome. facing up and being bold enough eh, to sort of come on, uh, not only on the set, but also to face up to this particular topic. And we just want to say from the outset, we do understand, ladies, that you also uh, are victims. You also struggle with this drug as well. You're not the, uh, uh, it's not just a man issue, but tonight uh, with our show, we're going to open up about it and take responsibility and face up to it as men. Yes. So, you know, yeah, the first uh, discussion we're going to have, guys, is just the first encounter with methamphetamine and how long? Tuko. Yeah, my first encounter was in uh, actually incarceration when I, when I was in my cell. Uh, it uh, was, um, I, I experienced uh, the, uh, uh, the, the buzz of it uh, kept me up all night and um, couldn't eat, couldn't do anything. So the first, that is first experience. But when I got out in the morning and uh, started playing touch, oh, gee, I was uh, trying to love me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a Superman. Yeah, Superman. So then I was like, oh, geez, it was quite good. Yeah, yeah. Next minute, we went back for some more. You know, just dragged you back and then, oh, hello. Now putting some hit, uh, good hits in on the crash and... So, oh, gee, I couldn't feel nothing, you know, to uh, start coming down. Ooh, so you start feeling all that. How many, how many years from starting to, oh, to ending it? Uh, the, how many years was it? Yeah, well, when I, uh, when I got released uh, um, after my uh, incarceration, it pretty well a good, ooh, good five years experience in it. Yeah, a good five years, and then pretty well uh, distributing it, distributing it out, yeah. Uh, I made more money off it than I made any, off anywhere else. Okay. Yeah, it's just a good money turner. Thanks, Toko. Billy, for yourself, Billy, you know, um, having uh, had experience with meth, and I see, you know, you're supporting a very uh, strong co-papa there. 
Um, what was it like for you? Well, Elder Kane, my first puff was two, uh, 1997. Um, I remember smoking at about 6 o'clock in the evening and uh, I had work at 6 the next day. I didn't get no sleep. I stayed up like I was blinking um, in the army, you know, just up all night listening to the owls. And I went to work the next day. I was like, uh, as Toko said, like a superman. I joined a limo on the field playing rugby. Uh, I actually, when I look at myself, I see myself now, I, 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 classed, my, I classed myself as I, I looked like an idiot because I was like... Um, I only had one job to do, which was called gate felting. Um, but I was like doing 10 million things at once and, and I must have looked like an idiot from going here to there and just rushing around like a, a bat out of hell, so to speak. Um, and from there on, Elder Kane, I, I, I wanted more of it, more of it. And um, I just got worse to where I wasn't, I never sold it, <clears throat> never distributed or anything like that. I just simple smoker. Um, so from there on I just smoked and smoked and smoked and it got worse from from a dollar bag to, to a two dollar bag to a half to to holes would have been the biggest bag I ever ever got to. I, well, I wasn't a, a, a big time smoker, just a small time. I didn't play with much. Um, but yeah, as I said, from there on I just took off like a bat out of hell and just smoked it like a train. Um, but I, I, I come to a point in my life where um, my kids were hating me. My, my eldest daughter, uh, she's 18 now. So she saw me from 18 years ago growing up and she saw this man that was loving P more than her. And so I had to make the decision, gosh, my daughter hates my guts. I need to mm. smash the pipe mm. and love her and not the P because mm. I did. Um, and that's the same for my 17 year old son. He saw me for 17 years, you know, out the gate. I wasn't there for him when, in his growing up, when I look at, back at it, I see him and my daughter, they, they looked lost without a father. Mm -hmm. um, even though I was there with them, you know, bringing them up to now. Um, and then my, 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 my wahine, who I've been with for 20 years, um, you know, I, I dragged her through hell. I, 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 I fed her up on the stuff. Um, to where it was like she was my guinea pig, you know. Oh, here's some new stuff. It's called champagne. I'll give it to her, you know, and see how she she takes it in. And yeah, I, I had to finally wake up and smash the pipe. Awesome, Billy. Well, we're gonna come back and discuss some more, a lot more about uh, yeah, some of yeah. our experiences, Billy. Brother Ed, uh, thank you for coming on to the set. And just anybody that's out there from uh, Otaki and Levin, Palmerston North, you know Brother Ed here. And uh, we just want to do a shout out to you and welcome you on board tonight. Awesome, and open up yeah. So over to my brother Ed over here. Look, brother, um, you know, obviously uh, with you being engaged with gang life, um, and with gang life comes, uh, you know, drugs and uh, that type of lifestyle. Mm. What was the experience like for you? Well, for me, and you know, being in the gang life and you know, dealing with the P and all that, it was uh, I don't know, it brought, it brought with me anyway, it brought uh, no fear, fear upon me. You know, I, I could be amongst a lot of things that uh, you know, most people wouldn't even do, bro. You know, and um, they had bullets flying past me, and you know, just because I'm, I'm fried and I'm you know, just out the gate on P. You know, I wouldn't even, i have no fear, bro. I'd just be lying here, you know, waiting for the bullets to stop so I could get up and, you know, start, you know. And, um, uh, yeah, no, P was, was a, it was a big part of my life. Mm -hmm. I can't really remember the first time that I, I smoked it, but, you know, I remember smoking it for 16 years in my life, you know. Um, and I've seen and done a lot of things during that time on P, and I've, I've probably ruined a lot of a lot of people's lives, you know. Mm, amazing. Um, mm. So, yeah, no, it's really good. Mm. Yeah, thanks, Ed. 
Yikaiwi, you know, with your uh, mm. engagement and work in the community, you know, you, yeah. you obviously have got a good eye and a good feel yeah. to just what's, uh, what methamphetamine is doing in our communities, yeah. you know, just, just some, you know, from report on that. Well, I guess with, with, with the statistics today, we will understand that um, it is, you know, just, just seeing before with the show, you know, that it is the most, it's bigger than alcohol. Like, wow. wow, that's mm. a big, mm. that's a big insight for me, you know, because uh, I'm from the outside looking at all our brothers, you know, I think meth should be hidden behind the scenes, but no, it's actually like a legal drug and it's accessible to all our people. So I guess, mm. well, the impacts on the community are very real. And there's very real men around us, you know, that are actually exposing this, this drug we call it, you know, a demon. Uh, but I guess, yeah, it's, it's a massive insight to, for it to be as, as, as high as alcohol. So it doesn't sound like, it do, you know, we call it a demon, but the first experience sounds like something really amazing, eh? You know, mm -hmm. the, the, the euphoria, they call it, the excitement <laughs> euphoria, and yeah. uh, yep. the Superman experience or the Superwoman experience, mm. yep. taking you out of your normal mm. state uh, and giving you the sense of energy, uh, as I said, the euphoria of... No fear, mm. you know. Mm. I'm, yeah, and uh, everything that I see and do, uh, you know, it's believable. Yeah. You know, hallucinating and all those sorts of things. You know, why? I was going to ask this. You know, th what, what we know what methamphetamine is, and if you don't know, just look. Go on, go on to YouTube. It's all over YouTube. It's all over our newspapers. Mm. We want to go a little bit deeper than that tonight. We want to basically yeah. get into some of that root mm. stuff. Um, why is it that we need a Superman drug? Why do we need to take something that sort of, as you say, makes us fearless, uh, limitless, uh, happy, uh, and enjoying life? Why are we having to take uh, a substance called methamphetamine? Why do you think we need to take it? Don't we naturally have it? Mm, it just enhances it. That's all. It enhances that 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 that, that Superman was that there. Mm. Yeah, well, let me put it another way. Mm. What are, what are we covering up? Yeah, that's right. But mm, pretty mm. much. If you're not feeling right or something's going going on you know as soon as you have a puff it's it's gone mm. it's over it's all right. you know? yeah. so for for myself uh and maybe some viewers tonight you've never experienced taking methamphetamine and don't even do it but you know hearing these experiences now it's it's sort of like a, the devil's candy they say if mm. it's candy then you know it's like giving candy to a kid they just take it receive it yeah and and then and then it becomes something of a normality, right? Yeah. yeah. So what are we covering up? I'm still pushing on this one. What are we covering up? If we needed yeah. to take some excitement pills, uh, why why aren't we naturally excited? It could be a whole lot of things. Why why you you know you smack it? You know I I, I started going hard on it because my old lady passed away, and you know that's um, mm. just mm. something that could help me deal with it, and you know just to block the pain that I had, you know for you know for losing my mum, you know I could just smoke and all that pain will go away, you know? I never really dealt with my um, pain of losing my mum. Um, that was the only way I knew how to deal with it, so. Mm. 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 Yeah, similar experiences, the you know, sort of the motivation to take pee? I used to have to answer, because I'm a rookie. I'm a rookie compared to the brothers here, you know, and I can probably count on my hand the amount of time I wrap my mouth around a pipe. Uh, but I guess it was just the whole, um, it was accessible around us, but it was also, you know, yeah. The system and what was around me, you know, because it's a gradual climb. I didn't just jump into PE. It was actually, I was hooked on, on, on the greens. You know, and I guess the environment around me, you know, and why was I hooked on the greens? And why couldn't the greens suppress now that pain? So I needed to get a higher drug, uh, a stronger drug to suppress that pain even more. And I guess the pain was just, you know, the, 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 the gap that there was no father there, you know, the gap of, mm -hmm. you know, there was no validation or mm -hmm. you're the man, my boy, so mm -hmm. the fix of the environment and the brotherhood was a bit better than so I guess. I just want to push that pain yeah. button for a minute, just put P to the side, yeah. you know, P, yeah, okay, we can agree, we want, we want to touch yeah. it because mm. uh, we're hurt, so I just want to push some of the pain buttons around the circle and say, and ask the real question of what was going on on the inside? Mm. Why, if, you know, you had your first puff and you got excited and there was a lift and all that, but what are we covering up in our childhood? What really is uh, what's going on? Uh, well, personally, for me, brothers, um, Elder Kane, um, I was brought up with uh, four, five siblings, um, a single mother. Uh, Dad died when I was eight years old. Uh, he was Black Power Cindy. He was in the first chapter, actually, with Abe Parewaka. If you fellas don't know Abe, uh, he's one of the rangatiras of uh, Black Power Cindy founder. Um, so yeah, like I said, dad died when I was eight, so 
Mum brought us up um, on her own. Uh, my brothers, two of, two of my eldest brothers, um, joined up with Mungka Pukikoe, Aotearoa, um, and they sort of carried on that trait of Dad's um, tradition that he 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 he, he uh, started in our life, in our family, as a culture. Um, so yeah, my brothers, uh, patch members, uh, Mungka Pukikoe, Aotearoa, and then they died. Um, I sort of carried on that 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 motto, that that culture, as I believed it was, <clears throat> growing up as a little fella. Um, but but going back to the the pain, uh, P helped me to 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 deal with it, not think about my my history because it messed me up. It messed me up, eh? Not having dad. Um, I felt sorry for my mum bringing us up because you know she did the best she could, but. Mm. Really, she didn't. Um, but I, I don't blame her for that. Mm. I, I don't um, hold her accountable for that. Not at all. Love you, Mum. Um, and I forgive you. And she, I've already talked to her about it. We, I asked her to forgive me because I hated her for, you know, not being the mother she should have been. So, Billy, just just adding to that, you're, you're saying that, you know, there is a, there's definitely pain inside of ourselves, you know, and... Yeah. Uh, Sometimes, you know, there's no other remedy, you know, we know a remedy and we're going to share about that towards <coughs> the end, but uh, initially going through this whole uh, lifestyle of taking drugs, especially around methamphetamine, to plaster uh, the pain mm -hmm. that's within, you know, mm -hmm. and it be, I guess if we add our partners into that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a double whammy, isn't it, because, you know, if mm -hmm. she's taking methamphetamine, mm -hmm. well, any of mm -hmm. your partners took yep. methamphetamine, yep. yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Me and my partner took meth, you know, because that's pretty much the only time we would be, would be happy, you know, because if we went on meth, we would just, I was put a brick wall between us because, you know, I didn't want to know her, she didn't mm. want to know me, you know, Amazing. so mm. um, unless we had meth in our life, we would be happy, you know, so it played a big, uh, played a big uh, role in me and my partner's life. Yeah, um, meth. it does, eh? You can yeah. add to that too, Billy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I was quite uh, fortunate that my wife didn't indulge in that. She was dead against it. So she full, felt the uh, full brunt of uh, my uh, friedness. Ah. Yeah, so... Uh, got the blunt end uh, of the stick, eh? uh, Mine was coming from uh, just a um, long incarceration. I, I spent 10 years inside straight and getting out and, and getting, you know, already had her introduced to fires inside. And getting out and then going straight back on it and pretty well, you know, I was, I, I was uh, trying to look for money too, you know, instead of robbing the bank, I started yeah. unloading it, yeah. unloading the rights in there and, uh, you know, I could see the money coming out and I went, wow, you know, they don't have to rob the bank here, you know. So, so you were dealing with? Dealing with, yeah, pretty well in a, in a big quantities of it and, mm. and um, yeah, it was just, wow, it was at... It was Everywhere, everywhere I was, there was bags of it there, so unloading it and smoking it and... and, and Just so some people out there took all, uh, you know, methamphetamine inside our uh, New Zealand prisons, they're probably thinking, that, that doesn't happen, does it? Yeah. Does it happen? Oh, definitely. Massive, yeah. massive. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely in there. Yeah. It's probably not the only thing that you can get in there. I believe you can get a lot of things, eh? Oh, you tell me, it's, it's all in there. Everything. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's just like it's in the outside. Okay, yeah. we'll probably leave that little bit for a moment. But <laughs> mm. talking about this, uh, this, uh, this business that gangs are starting to, or had not started, they've been doing it for a long time. The trade mm. of uh, drugs, and particularly now methamphetamine, because it is it is true. It's not a it's not a Maori problem. It's covering right across the spectrum of yeah. all ethnics, yeah. all pay packets and statuses of life. Yeah. Um, is that true? It's not, it's not it's just us oh, Maori and Pacific and then, Islanders doing it, is it? Oh, it's, it's across the board. It's across the board. Everyone's uh, uh, benefiting off it. Mm. Um, uh, financially, you know, they're pretty well not getting much for on the dole. So they're pretty well working and making heaps off it just on being on the doors. Mm. Some of the people that have been on the doors, you know, they're getting their dole in and, and plus some on the side and getting some to puff up and that's where the, the trend uh, begins and before you know it, uh, you know, you, you're addicted. Yep. Yeah. Mm. So I was asked to the question, Ed, to you, Ed, um, 
you know, how organised is the is, is the syndicate when it comes to the distribution of methamphetamine? And is there a consciousness there that, hey, it's impacting our community, it's impacting our family? Or is it just purely about the organisation of money? Well, pretty much the end of the day, well, well for, for me anyway, being in the gang life and for myself, it was just all about the money. Yeah. Mm. Didn't really yeah. care. Um, you know, I could see people struggling. I didn't care. Mm. I just, you know, you got the money, you want what I got, yeah. so sweet. I don't care. I didn't mm. care about anything, bro. Just mm. as long as you had the money, mm. you'll get the product, so. Mm. So, mm. I just want to put this, I just want to mm. add this in now, right now, you know. <clears throat> The Bible, the Bible has uh, got recordings. It's got history around uh, drug dealing, well before the headhunters and the Mongol mob and everybody, every, everybody other losing uh, organisation came along. There were drug dealing. There was a drug dealer in the Bible, and his name was Simon the Sorcerer. And I'm going to bring this up because I think we need to understand some some of the origin around drug. Drugs. I'm not talking about medicine. I'm not talking about antibiotics. Mm -hmm. When you get an infection, take the antibiotics and a process of uh, that medication healing. I'm talking about drugs, in terms of altering the mindset. Mm. And uh, Simon the sorcerer, he was. His name was. Uh, he was a sorcerer. So what he was. Uh, what he did was he actually uh, put together po potions or mixtures that actually would cause uh, hallucinations and uh, all sorts of fascinations, mm. uh, as we see with methamphetamine. Mm. And the word pseudo, pseudo is a Greek word for supernatural, but it's a mm. false supernatural. So what you've been talking about in terms of being Superman and Invisible Man and wow. Invincible Man and all this sort of stuff, mm. right? This is this, is this potion. Yes. Now, let's be, let's be open up right now, because mm. I tell you, these potions have been designed, obviously, by Satan. So the origin of the origin of uh, so sorcery is witchcraft. Yeah, yeah. Okay, witchcraft. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yes. And so you look at Lion Breweries. Listen, Lion Breweries is just a giant witchcraft organisation because yeah. what they're doing is they're mm. mixing drinks. Now you know for a fact if you've consumed these uh, types of alcohol mixes that you know that they actually change your alter your mindset. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Alter your alter your thinking. Yeah. Okay. Same with drugs. Drug dealers, what do they do? They don't just go and pluck a tree, or that's the green grass. But I'm talking about when they're cre when they're creating methamphetamine, they're using compounds and and uh, different products to actually mix this potion yep. for a false pseudo or false supernatural, a false uh, a false um, power. But yet, it, it it physically gives you this uh, feeling that you've you've got it, you've received it. Mm. Mm. So we've got to open this up. This, this, there's a, there's a spirit behind this, mm. Mm. and viewers, listen. There is a spirit behind this. There's a spirit behind the drug trade, mm. spirit behind alcohol. Okay, the ultimate name of the spirit is Satan, but the the the, the actual ID or identification is witchcraft. You probably think, oh, this is no Harry Potter stuff, but no, no, mm. this is this is this is real mm. stuff mm. because you look at what's happening to our people. Mm. They're getting they're getting they're getting messed up psychologically, mentally, physically. Yeah. Relationally, yeah. Yeah. everything is falling to pieces. Yeah. And it's, if you wanted to smell it and identify it, I would say it was Satan. Yeah. You can say it's the gangs, you can say it's the Chinese, you can say yeah. it all, the, all that you like, but track it back to that spirit yeah. that is behind it. Your elder. We'll have an answer at the end of this as we'll talk more yeah. about this, but yeah. um, now that I've said that you know, on this panel, does it make sense to you? Your elder, definitely. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. definitely. Everyone wants to jump on it at the same time. Yeah. Mm. Potions, mixtures, yeah. hallucinations. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's it, it's been around for a while because uh, they were giving it in uh, weightlifting uh, powders too, pseudo and weightlifting, just selling right. it over the pseudo counter. Pseudo mm. Pseudo everything coming over the counter. So people were little did they know they were uh, meth. They were fried too because they do weights, but you know, it gives you that Superman uh, thing. But uh, for us. Uh, you know, it, it, it was destroying our families and destroying everyone that we loved. Yeah, so... When you talk about ocean. these three words, I'll strong words, think about them before you answer. Steal, rob, and destroy. The Bible says in John 10.10 10, that Satan comes mm. to do these three things. When you think about methamphetamine, call it a thief, because it, it does. Yeah. But when you talk about steal, rob, and destroy, 
Answer to any one of those that you've experienced within your life. And when you're, when you're answering this, think about your, think about your partner, think about your children, mm, yeah. your mokopona. Think, just have a good think about it. Yeah, no, I, I can respond to that, uh, Melda Kane, uh, especially on the, um, on the uh, rob and destroy. Actually, the whole three, the whole shebang, steal. Because mm. um, of my 20 years on the pipe, uh, eight months clean now, Farno, don't forget that. Yes, sir. My man. Because uh, of my 20 years on the pipe, uh, my daughter, 18 years old, eh, I'll go back to my daughter. Um, Satan stole me from her by using pee by making me smoke pee. Um, mm. I, was never, I wasn't there for my daughter, 18 years old. I love you, my girl. And she knows it now. She knows I love her. Mm. She knows I've changed. She knows I've smashed the pipe. And to you, my son, awesome, bro. 17 years, mm. 16 years old, I, you stole me from them, Satan. But I thank you, Jesus. He's given me back me. to them. Oh. He's given me back okay. to them. Uh, my, my, my darling Tori, I'm sorry, my girl. I fed you up with the crack. Ten, ten years. I'm sorry, girl. And I'm, I'm so glad that we're both in the house of D.C. And our two little ones are going to go up, carry on that, 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 that D.C. flavor. You feel me, y'all out there? Man up, brotherhood, to tell the movement. Yeah. This is me for life. Mean brother. Mean so kia ora, just awesome. responding mean to your yeah. lies, steal, and um, nice. yeah. Thanks for being real about it, brother. Mean. Mm. Anyone else on that? Mm. Well, I guess it was just the whole, we need a fix. I wasn't distributing, but you're still from your mum. <laughs> yeah. It's the love of your life. Mm. You know, I'd never thought I'd go that far. And then they'll ask me, and I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Still a jewelry. Go pull chop, pawn it off. Stealing, but it's normal. When you need that fiction, you need that drive, mm -hmm. man, but it's mm -hmm. stealing <laughs> from your own. Yeah. Because you never thought you would ever steal from, but that's the nature of the beast now. You see it in communities, you talk to brothers, it's the nature of it, eh? Yeah. 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 Same here. Rob, steal, and yeah. When we think about the children, you know, mm. The, mm. The, the ones that don't have a voice, you know, mm. thanks, Billy, for, you know, sharing that with us, yes, sharing yeah. that with our audience as well. Uh, Mind you, you do anything, key when, when, when you want to get it, get yeah. it high. Yeah. You don't, you don't care. You don't. You think, probably, yeah. You just do it. You know. You don't, mm. you don't care about your kids. You don't mm. care about your family. You just, just care about mm. their high. Once you're high, then mm. you know. That's all you care about at the time. It's part of what I was talking about before. You know, this whole thing about um, uh, meth that we talk about, and we talk about sorcery, and we talk about that witchcraft. Well. With that comes a spell, and a spell mm. is like uh, when you're spellbound, you basically uh, right. you're under a, you're under a, you're yeah. under an influence. You're mm. under an in you mm. are in control. Let's not make let's not let's not make the mistake of saying, well, hey, the devil put it into into my hand. You participate. That's right. You yeah. make the choice. That's right. You make the decision. But once you make the decision, and then you you inject or you you inhale, then you're bringing a spell upon your life, and you're spellbound. That's what you're talking about. Mm. Just um, just totally blinded, mm. totally blinded, deaf and dumb to everything that's real and everything that matters. If that, if, is that not what we've seen? Is that not what we're experiencing? Yep. Yeah. Uh, and seen happen within our families. Oh, for sure. You know, one of the most horrific things that we're seeing as a, as a trend now is child, youth and family, or well, to Oranga Aki they call themselves now, but they are moving in now on, uh, on families that are, or mums and dads that are consuming meth and taking the children away. Now, when you explained you know, yeah. how much of a spell you're under. Mm -hmm. Some ways, you, you know, I don't want to get political here and, you know, get offside with the audience, but someone's got to save those children. My personal experience, we've had an experience in my own family where my granddaughter nearly got taken away by SIFs, but was fortunately as a family we came together to stop SIFs, work with, my, work with the family member, keep um, our granddaughter together and our family and they, 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 but that may not be the case for everybody. Hey, mm, mm. that may not be the case for everybody tonight. Mm. As you can see, it's quite a sobering topic, isn't it? <laughs> mm. We've had other topics where we've been quite uh, lively, and because I think it's close to our hearts, mm. it really is. We've all we've all got whānau yeah. that have been affected by methamphetamine. Yeah. 
and the, the effects that it has on them and the family members around them. And so, you know, uh, we've still got, we've got an hour session, so I do want you to put your questions up tonight uh, to us around uh, what you're going through, what your challenges are, and hopefully, you know, through the experiences that we have here tonight, we can actually answer that. Mm. But before we go any further, guys, listen. <clears throat> How do we? How do? How do? How do? You, how do you? How do you afford to actually be? On, afford to actually, you know, uh, support this uh, yeah, yeah. this this habit? Yeah. Come on, it was the biggest. Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's one thing I wouldn't be able to explain either. You know, because some weeks you better spend a thousand, some weeks hundred dollars. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. You just don't know where the money's coming from, but. Mm. Well, you would, know, you, would you have to sell stuff from home to supply, uh, support the habit? Uh, habit? Yeah, pretty much. You'd, yeah, do anything to. Mm. Yeah, I've you know throughout my my time of smoking pee, me and my wife we've probably we've probably sold like four four whole houses. Mm. You know, complete furnish. You know, Is that right? enough to yeah. you know can completely yeah. furnish four houses, bro. We've sold for pee. Mm. You know. But, yeah, it's yeah, amazing. For it's me, amazing. Uh, uh, we, we put made, made our own. We made it, uh, cooked our own and, and put it in bags. As long as half of it was going to the club, the other half was supposed to go to uh, to the for, to our PTA, but I uh, was just going to waste, just smoking it. Pretty well, uh, just whatever I had, I made, was supposed to be for the family. Went, went down my lungs. Uh, or else we, else we, um, buying toys and things like that, you know, uh, bikes, cars, things like that, and not even nothing to the family, you know. So, how does it make us feel as men? How does it make us feel as men? And I guess, you know, we can say we're, you know, so many years clean and so much, so, but how does it actually make us feel when we remember just what carnage, what decisions we've made? that have brought a lot of you know, pain to our families. A lot of us probably could be past that, or maybe still working through it. But how does it make us feel that we've you know, potentially uh, poisoned a lot of people? Oh, well, yeah, pretty well uh, your trips every time, you know. Still, still going through that process too, you know. Still, still a working process now. You know, I'm still working through it, but uh, getting there, you know. Keeping myself occupied with the positive and um, yeah, but uh, yeah, now I've run into uh, some of the people that I've uh, sold it to and their kids. And I just, you know, you can imagine what I done to their mum and dad and that, and and why they're the way they are. See them up the remand centre when I'm up there. You know, their kids coming in, and uh, you know, I find myself responsible for those kids being in there, and uh, you know, and they're beating their mums and dads up. So. Yeah, I feel guilty, yes. And it's it's definitely helping me with my my uh, uh, rehab and that, dealing with it. It's, uh, you know, but uh, pray and just ask for forgiveness. Here's a that. question to us all, and I guess uh, this this is a, this is probably a good question, you know, how. How do we? How do if we've got a if, if we've got a family member that's addicted to pee? Mm -hmm. How do we help them? What's the steps? What what advice have we got? Someone's on pee in the family. What well, do we look, do? Look, I'll come straight out to it. Um, and this is for you, my blood. I love you, my brother. Mm. Uh, my brother, he's on it hard. This is my sibling. No name dropping, yo. But uh, he knows I'm there um, to show the way, my brother, that light at the end of the funnel that you can see. Mm. It's him, brother, and you know who I'm talking about. He wants you to come. And where does he want you to come, my brother? To the kingdom, brother. Um, I, see, I see him all the time. And, uh, and others, and other brothers. Because I'm, I'm not around the stuff, um, guys, I'm elder, brothers, I'm not around the stuff, but I'm around users a lot. Mm. I see them a lot, like uh, like an everyday sort of thing. 
visits and um, and it hurts me to see them like that because um, I can see what I was, you know, and out the gate um, lost in the paddock, the rest of the sheep over there, but I'm here, where are we? I'm over there. Mm. Um, and straight away I think of, of your fellow's children. I think of our children, brothers, sisters out there. I think of our children and their children. So, um, you know, I'm going to put this out to you, then I want to, I, want to, I want to put a word to you, farmer out there, people, all people. Get off the stuff, man, because you're living in denial. Believe me when I say you're living in denial, okay? Do you really, really want to carry on doing what you're doing to your children? Yeah. One night when you're up, you have a look at your children. Have a look inside your cupboards. Do you really want to keep living in denial? For me, I was spending our money for the last five years. Even mm -hmm. though I was on it for 20 years, five years. The money all gone, the mm. benefit all mm. gone, my wahine's mm. benefit all gone, my daughter's board and her tane's board mm. all gone, we had no food. I was going to Countdown Pack and Save every day, walking out of there with like $100, $50 to $100 stealing food, and my niece buying a dollar bread. Did I really want to live like that for the rest of my life? No. I didn't want my children and their children to follow those footsteps of a loser. We must be winners, Fanu, as our BBT says. We are winners. <coughs> Come, join us, be a winner. Awesome, bro. Smash that pipe, Fanu. Awesome, awesome bro. I guess the, thank you, Billy. This is some of the other answers too, are like um, the fact that we've got to open up, bro, you know? Like you're giving a word and you're giving some sort of encouragement, but it's not spoken openly like this. You've got to go to an actual website to get some help, or you've got to go to some sort of referral, mm -hmm. or you've got to hit rock bottom yeah. before you realise it. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that we're opening it up now, about the stop yeah. and bringing it in front of our whanau's faces and say, hey, it's killing our people, but hey, here are some trophies. Here are some people that have overcome them, and I guess it's just, yeah, we've got a brotherhood that turns over p addicts. We've got a brotherhood that actually work with people from the ground up, um, and trophies like this, and many more. So I guess yeah. you're talking about it. Yeah. some of those answers, eh? I agree, I agree. <clears throat> talking yes. about it, open talk. Uh, we're not ashamed of our past nah. because obviously our past is we've been we've, we've been healed mm. uh, from our from our from our difficulties because mm. we've had the opportunity yeah. to open up, confess to those that we've hurt. Yeah. Um, and I agree with Tuckle. You know, sometimes you're going to see some people on the streets that you know you've had mm. some bad encounters with, yes, but you've got to mm. be able to uh, mm. face up to that, mm. not yeah. ignore it, mm. take responsibility. Um, yeah, we do some bad stuff along the way as yeah. men, and we make some bad calls, we make some bad decisions. Uh, my yeah. advice to some anyone that's going through uh, the addiction of methamphetamine and is within the family, mm. and I don't say this lightly, is that you've got to love them. Yeah. And uh, love, love is, a, love is a strong word, you know. It's uh, an unconditional love because um, they're in a mess, they're in a spiral, they're in yeah. despair, they're uh, under a spell. <clears throat> and the only thing that I remember with my own daughter my oldest daughter was, was working through with her and just kept loving her, keep messaging her, keep inviting her, keep loving her, telling her that, you know, I'm mm. here for her. And uh, mm. I got negative responses all the time whilst in, that, uh, in that, that spell that she was under with the meth. But you know what? We conquered it, conquered that thing. Beautiful. And as a father, I just had to stick by her, not be ashamed. Don't be ashamed of your family members if they're struggling with uh, methamphetamine and addictions. You, you, you've got to stand tall with them. That's why we have two tangata on our top. We, we stand mm. tall and we stand with uh, our whanau. We don't, mm. we don't throw stones at them and judge them. We've got, no. to, we've got to stand tall with them mm. and show them what love is and show them how to walk through those tunnels, mm. show them how to face you know, our enemies and love our enemies and, and, and be able to deal with those mm. things, eh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's just my part to add to that, you know, yes. just close to home. Awesome. Uh, yes, beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Anyone else on that one before we sort of, uh, sort of move on? Yeah, it's the same as um, my um, mother-in-law and my father-in-law. They continued for seven years to just keep loving me, and mm. you know, even though I was going through all my mm. habits and still in my gang life, they just continued for seven years, and you now I'm here today. That's a commitment, eh? Mm. You yeah. know, some people can give up in seven weeks. 
That's right. But you really know your family and uh, you really know who really loves you when you go through uh, the darkness eh? mm. uh, of an addiction and particularly around methamphetamine. So, mm. 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 Hey, I just want to put it out there, excuse me, okay? <laughs> I just want to put it out there to all you brothers out there, sisters, um, if you know, if you're struggling with the pipe, the methamphetamine pipe, and you want help and you need help, please come to Legacy nearest to your town or man up nearest to your town yeah. it does work man up legacy programs do work i've been smoke i was smoking it for 20 years mm. 1997 to um two th uh, 2016 uh sorry 2017 as of march gone uh 20 years on the pipe and man up helped me people um, man up does work, legacy does work. Yes. So just, just throwing that out to you yes. viewers that aren't with, with man up or um, legacy uh, or hating on Destiny Church, because we are a part of Destiny Church, but it does work. I, yeah. did, um, I did anger management in jail. Um, I did, um, what do you call it, alcohol cads in jail, 2005. Um, the Rock, it didn't work. I got out, I still got drunk and drove behind the wheel. Um, you know, anger man management didn't work. I still beat my missus up like Jake the Muss. The last time I cracked my missus, I hooked her in the chin and fractured her jaw. She had to go to the doctors. Man up, helped me, smash the pipe, stop beating my missus and being a Jake the Muss and all other issues that I had to nice. deal with. Now, lastly, I'm trying to deal with my corridor, because you can feel me, I still got a bit of hibbly hoobla in my corridor, but hey, man up does work, whanau. Kia ora tu tangata. Tu tangata. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, Billy. Man up does work. Yeah. Yes. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to go to an AV right now, and this is uh, Brother uh, King Free. He's uh, been live on the streets just to get some uh, some talk from the Fano out there in South Auckland. Check it out. It's your bro King Free, the bro aka Clint, coming live to you from the streets of Otara, South Auckland. Uh, we've been out here in the community asking our people, our bros, about methamphetamine and the effects it's having in our community. So, if you're struggling in that area in your life, or you know anyone affected by methamphetamine, then contact the link below and ring the number 0800 One Man Up. That's us, family. Pretty nice one is one another, like money and stuff, like drugs involves money, then it hurts families and families are like watching this on the news, keeping their kids locked up, like inside, or not wanting like going out at night because it's getting more dangerous, like at night and stuff. Um, destroys it by the, by the minute. Um, some people just reckon they can't get out of it, but it's a, it's a mind thingy. Uh, if, if, if that's the life that you want to lead, you're going to stay there. If that's not the life that you want, it's up to you whether you get yourself out of it. I guess all we can do is really say no. Say no to buying it. It's a big one. But yeah, that's probably my stand on it. Uh, Money-wise, um, lose your brain, hey, can't function, think you can't function without it, but you can. Uh, it's quite an expensive drug. Kids probably go a bit hungry because some parents choose to buy that kind of stuff. And obviously, it's still, still not good. My cousin just recently died, just like two weeks ago, of that. He has three beautiful kids, and the the age of five, he took that in. It wasn't good. And the kids are going to grow up without a father. If I was to go to school and the kids were like, I would do something to stop it, get the teachers involved, help them out myself. Um, they'll probably hassle like teenagers and all that in school and all that. But then again, it's like for their safety, so it's kind of like. Job, I like get them help, 
before like things escalate too far and sometimes like too late and then all you can do right now is mean just get trying to like support him Kia ora, welcome back Thank you very much. This has been our one hour special. We're at the last part of our uh, show tonight. We've been uh, addressing the issues and uh, really uh, opening up around the me uh, issue around methamphetamine, crack, peat, and the destruction and the destroying uh, factors around this drug towards our family, our loved ones, and our community, and our nation. Time to confront it, time to open up about it, and uh, as you've seen tonight and heard, uh, the brothers, we've, uh, we've put our money on the line tonight talked a little bit about our personal experiences. We, we hope that it's encouraged you. Now, thank you very much for the questions that you have actually given yeah. to us. So what we're going to do now is just uh, finish the last segment on answering some of these questions. Yes, All right. those that have got uh, mm. diplomas and uh, drug and alcohol counselling, but uh, we've been there and we've done that and we've come out the other side Beautiful. through with life experience. So, hey, guys, here we are. Last part of tonight. Thank you very much uh, for being on uh, our show tonight. Uh, I've got a question here, and it says here, um, being clean for nine months, it's hard, it's hard to stop the hunger pains and the taste of it in your mouth. Taste it in your mouth. The oh. taste of it in your mouth. I wouldn't really know, bro, you know? But um, just to be around positive people, bro, it, it, sure that's what helped me. Yeah. So... Stay around positive people. Sure. So the answer to that, positive people, is that you know the law of association. If you hang out with drug dealers and druggies, guess what? You'll be puffing. Yeah. Hang out with positive people that are going in a positive direction. You'll be going with them and on the same path. Yeah, yeah I, I've i got addicted to odd fellas to that mint taste, getting that mint taste. So so to <laughs> kill off that um, odd fellas. Yeah, odd fellas are minties. <laughs> Anything minty, I I, I ate it and it's yeah. Uh, didn't get that craving in, you know, that, that taste, you know, trying to do away with that taste. So, yeah, yeah, I, I found that helped me a lot. Well, shout out to the old fellows and, uh, and mint lollies. <laughs> yeah. It's and one way that business. you can actually help to deal with that, uh, yeah, that taste. taste. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Too much downtime by yourself, it gives you time to think about mm. all those things and, you know. Too much downtime. Taste, taste all that, you know, the stuff that you, you still want and so. Used to just uh, be around a lot of positive people. I run a fitness centre in Manukau, and uh, one of the things when I'm dealing with uh, guys that have been on meth because it's still in their body, the chemical of it, I use an old, old, old method. I tell them, smash the water and sweat it out. Mm. I don't know, it's just one method anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's another way. <laughs> anyway, you have yeah. some questions there? Yeah, I've got a question here. Um, obviously, with the P um, comes the uh, unfaithfulness. So, why do people cheat? on their partners while high on Pete. This will come to you, my bro. Hey, look, just real quick. Uh, I had an experience where um, we had no food, uh, no money, uh, because of my idiocy, smoking the, the crack. I spent our last, I think it was three or four odd hundred dollars on, on crack. Um, so my family were all sleeping. We had no food. Um, and I was really down and out because of that. Um, this chick on chat line wanted to hook up with me to have sex. It got that um, thing for me. I was going to take that challenge and go over to her place and have sex with her and rob her house clean. Why? Because we had no food, um, you know? So that was an evil thing to do, uh, what I was going to do, but I didn't go through with it. Um, yeah, but, but uh, hey, look, just real quick. Don't do it, eh? Don't do it, and then you won't end up in a kindle place in a bad situation. Well, I guess it's coming off the back of that too. It's, it's, he's just saying, you know, to feed the drug, you know, he had to do an act of um, cheating, but at the same time too, you know, just doing a bit of research on the, the drug P. I guess education too for some of our people. If you do have whānau that are on it and you're wondering why certain behaviours are happening, educate yourself because we're mm. just looking at the behaviour, but sometimes it's good to have some education as to why they are acting out. And P itself, gives a, a high drive or a sex drive. Um, I think it's a pseudo, I'm talking about being Superman. Mm. And you become Superman too, you think in the bed. So I think, you know, there's a bit of education for our people too, just to answer that question. Nice. Where's the question here? Now, P is destroying us. What would you say is the first, what is the first step? P is destroying the family. What is the first step? 
Give it up. Give it up. We can all answer this one. We'll have a go at answering this one. Do you want man up. up or legacy? Or even both? Give it up. Man up. Give it up. Yeah. Get involved in some training or something. Mine is don't, mine is, uh, don't ignore it. Yeah, that's right. Get don't some support. It. Wow. Yeah, get some support. Yeah. Don't cover it up and don't be uh, fuck a fucker and shy no. about a family member that's on crack. That's right. That's right. Because that, the longer you leave it, the Free more addicted they'll get and the deeper they'll go into the hole. Yeah. Beautiful. What's your one, Iwi? Well, I just guess, like, you know, man, we believe in, you know, when, when there's something on, you face up to it, you don't run away from it. Yeah. I mean, like the brother's saying, you know, it's talk about it. Um, I dress it head on and because um, we don't like to address issues, like to just hide it. So I guess just face it up to it. Should I give this next question? Sure, sir. So, my, my currently my partner is using pee. Can he still come <laughs> into a man up? <laughs> I don't think so, nah. Of course you can, brother. Of course, course you can. Of course um, you can. I, 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 I uh, joined Man Up November, uh, brother, sister, and uh, I was still going to Man Up Fry, you know. Um, but in saying that, I'm not trying to <laughs> persuade you to keep come, come fried. No, no. But <laughs> come for that support, brother. Um, yeah. There is help. Awesome. We can help you deal with that struggle. That's it. Um, we can help you smash the pipe, because I did, my brother. 20 mm. years on it. And believe me, I've tasted pretty much most of the, the Rockies you could name. Awesome. You know, yellow, blue, black, white, you name it. I smoked it. <laughs> but I smashed the pipe too, my brother. Champion. And so can you. So kia kaha, brother. Be strong. Think yep. positively and hang around with positive people. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at me, bro. I never used to look like this, brother. I was a bearded, um, um, he was ugly. looking, puddy he was looking, ugly. puddy looking, <laughs> Marty. But look at me now, my brother. You hang with the prosperous, Transformation. you become prosperous. Yes, that's Tell it. Me. Yeah. Awesome, Billy. Two brother, uh, brother, you know, with um, with that question, you know, uh, can all men come to man up, you know? What type of men and what you know? How do we how do we how do we deal with that? You know. Well, for me, uh, you know, my man up. I um, I don't. You come as you are, you know, because um, yeah. end of yeah. the day, you can't change overnight. So, mm. uh, the more you keep coming, the more hours it will get stripped off. So. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, they, 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 they might be in gangs. They might be on <laughs> meth. They might be in a whole lot of other things in between. But the um, thing the thing with man up is your love not judged. Yes. Yeah, hey? Your right. love did not that's judged. Right. That's right. So when we when I say your love, you're accepted. And we, we're with you, and we walk through this together, you know? Yeah. That's right. I think that's what we're saying, eh? Definitely. Mm. Another question here for us, guys. Um, <clears throat> uh, what support helps when you're off pee? What support helps? The family. Gathering around your family. Yeah. Um, uh, man Up in Legacy definitely works for uh, the yeah. man in the... And, and, um, the, the wives, um, but uh, getting, yes, yeah, well, just anyone that's uh, on the same wavelength that, that of uh, giving up, basically. If you need to put yourself in, if it's too hard, if you need to put yourself in a rehab, go for it. You know, it's all yeah. going to be part of it, um, all part of the healing process, yeah. But, uh, yeah, pretty well, uh, pretty well addicted to that, and, um, uh, uh, I had to make some uh, challenges for me and mm. my family to get off it because I was destroying them, destroying my family, and um, pretty well uh, uh, it was going as far as I want to kill them and, and, and was going as far as I wanted to hurt them. So uh, I just recommend for those fellas that, uh, that are on it, get closer to people that are uh, uh, surrounded uh, with uh, positives positiveness for the people that are not uh, naive to the drug uh, some of the symptoms the movement of the jaw if you want to pick up some of the symptoms there's some of the symptoms of uh, pee for the if your children are on it uh, loss of weight and uh, uh, not eating not sleeping mm -hmm. there's all part of the symptoms mm -hmm. of uh, pee mm -hmm. so if you uh, if you see any of that happening with your kids mm -hmm. uh, they're on it yeah yeah, and I guess you know that's the thing again. You when you know they're on it, it's 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 it is it is time to take action. 
Mm. Not time to play around and mm. and uh, whether you know your kids are on it or your husband or your wife's on it or whoever's on it, it's actually start take action. Yeah. Because I can't stress it enough. Once you take your first puff and your second puff, you're on a you're on a vicious vicious mm. cycle, mm. and you're going to keep the old yeah. drug dealers in business, and we're going to shut you fellas down. Yeah. And because uh, you know th this is it, we we're not going to see uh, our, our families being destroyed no by a drug. Two tangata, we're staunch yeah. men, we're loving yeah. men, yeah. we're fathers, we're grandfathers, and we don't yeah. put up with this crap anymore. Nah. So if you guys, you little gangbangers out there pushing this uh, this stuff in uh, our right. communities and uh, to our homes, well, you, you, if you think about war, well, you've got a war. Yeah. But just even think about this, think about something I said earlier in the piece yeah. about the real enemy behind right. all, of this, uh, all of this masterminding and all of this puppeteering. Who's really pulling your strings? Gang members, leaders, and guys that are, you know, manufacturing methamphetamine and, synth and importing synthetics, that's enough is enough. We don't want that in our generations. We are a drug-free mm. culture. And we're Māori, we're Pacific Islander, and we are drug-free. We are even yeah. alcohol-free. That's right. That's the, that's the way going forward. Get yes. on get onto this movement. Join what we're about. We're seeing our lives not only transform and change, as Billy has said, but we're also now interjecting into the generation, mm. our children and our grandchildren, yeah. a way that is right and proper. My answer to that, what support helps when you're off P? Get to a hot church. Mm. Yeah, get to a place where it's happening. And I know with Destiny Church, whatever your mindset yeah. is and whatever you've been told, we are fruits of Destiny yeah. Church. We are men that have been transformed uh, mm. by the power of God. Yes. So that power that you've been playing around with called uh, methamphetamine, you're missing out on the real stuff. And that's that power that God gives us when he touches our lives and opens up our life to mm. our future. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So we are here and we've opened up about our backgrounds and our life. But I just want to challenge you tonight. You don't have to carry on yeah. living that half pie, that undervalued, that underprivileged life. Right. Nah. Stuff the pee, stuff the drugs. Get onto uh, a support group like Man Up or Legacy. Find somewhere mm -hmm. where you can get mm -hmm. support. We're ready. We're available. We're not government funded. Yeah. But we are, we are filled with so much love and compassion for people. And we want to see those drugs eradicated out of our society yeah. Yeah. and uh, that's why we're here tonight and this is why we've opened up tonight yeah. about this uh, and so you know we're going to sort of wrap up right now and what I'm going to do before we wrap up is give you all the opportunity just to give either some encouragement or something tonight to our yeah. whanau, uh and I want you to look down the barrel and um, give some advice and that encouragement last words maybe we'll start this way tukul yeah, just want to shout out to all the whanau, my whanau especially, that are uh, indulging in uh, methamphetamine. Get off it, get off it now. Get near a man up near you. Uh, get near a, a legacy near you. And uh, if you ain't going to do it for yourself, do it for your children. Yeah. Yeah. Jota. It's How oh, many of the brothers out there that are, you know, struggling in life and, and whatever and needing help? Um... I run, a, I run a man up and live in Beautiful. at uh, 7 o'clock every Wednesday at, te, te, at the library, Te Kākere. So come along, brothers. Welcome. Billy. Smash the pipe, whānau. This one was for you, my darling Tori Taylor, mm. my tamariki, my mokopuna. Mm. This is for you, fellas. Yeah. The change of life. DC South Side for life. Man Up Brotherhood, Two Tangata Movement, Deep South, TFFT, DC, you hear me? <laughs> now to all my whanau out there, Ōtara, TKU, Pukekoe, yeah, I'm going to name it, Māngere, Oruhu, all my South Side whanau that are on it, you know who you are. If you don't want to come to Man Up or Legacy, get at me, get at me, uncles, aunties, brothers, cousins, my brothers, mm. get at me. We can do it. Together, we'll totokoyis, or even not my whanau only, people out there to the Pukikoe whanau, if you're watching, come. Now, Hore Whan Marae Kuang Reo, 7 o'clock Thursday nights, come. Me. Come. Totoko Kite whanau, do it for yourself, your children, your, your tamariki, mokapuna, wahine. Hey, God bless whanau to tangata. Awesome, and I guess just, you know, highlighting the, the whole show, you know, 
One thing was exposed right at the beginning. I want to repeat it and I'll repeat it. It's exposing and identifying what the spirit is and behind all of it. It is Satan, but it's also, you know, why is our minds being influenced? Uh, there's a scripture that comes to mind, you know, uh, we shall be transformed by the renewing of our mind. For you to be good and, and prove who you are in the newness of life, you've got to start to get this in position. And, and that only comes when you're in a right environment and you know that your mind, at the moment, if you are on it, it's not your fault, but you are, you are a puppet for Satan. And you are a puppet in everything that you're doing because the Satan is the ruler over everything that, that, is, that is why you are under the influence of P. So I'm just exposing it. It is Satan in behind everything. Yeah. And it is the spirit of witchcraft. And I've just come to know that it's a spellbound. Your mind's in a spellbound. Mm. And you're probably Harry Potter yourself right now. So it's encouraging you but loving you at the same time. Two tongues a man up is here for you. Yeah. So I know I've got brothers that are the biggest money makers in the clubs here in Auckland. Brothers, man, we've had conversations over and over again. But I will stay in my, my, on my truth that this is the, the future for you too. So two Tangata brothers, we're here. Mangere man up, we're here for you. Yeah. Oh boy. Thank you very much. And so, you know, look, in closing off tonight, um, <clears throat> we just wanna, I just want to let you know we, we are very much a strong support base of, mm. of men and women. And the next AV you're about to see mm. is just going to show us a lot about that support base. We're more than just a Thursday night, one yeah. and a half hour program. Uh, the program, I guess... The purpose beats in our hearts uh, for our people, our communities. This next AV you're about to see of uh, my brother Jason just goes to show you what Man Up and the heart of Man Up is about. If you need help, ask for help. Yeah. If you can give help, get on board with Man Up and be a yeah. part of this great movement. Amazing. Yes. On that note, check this AV out. Here it comes. When I had gotten with my partner, I had made her a promise that I would never lay my hands on her. I was meant to be different. In the end, I wasn't different. When I snapped, basically I just, I let all of the negative thoughts take over. I let all of the pain and suffering come out. And it basically manifested to me turning up to a train station and getting ready to jump in front of the train. That day, I uh, woke up early in the morning, my partner was getting ready to get up to go to work. Basically, I was already on edge. We started a conversation, insecurities came up. I was being verbally abusive. It got to that point where she wasn't giving me the, the emotions that I needed, and then it became physical. I just totally lost control. I couldn't breathe. You know, here was constant pain, and here I just couldn't even see nothing. I pulled out a crap knife out of the jaw, you know, and I was just like, well, this is what you want. And I stuck it straight, well, straight in my throat, sorry. Um, that didn't work. So I got angrier. And then I just grabbed my bag and just went straight out the door. I basically walked from my house to the train station. All I had in my mind at that point in time was, yeah, no, this is over. My partner was on the phone at the time, begging me to come home, crying her eyes out. She goes, I'd, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in touch with Man Up. I was like, who? You know, what are they going to do for me? You know, I'm right here. And she goes, she, she just said to me, just keep your phone on. I was uh, in my office at the time, and then I had a notification come up on the Facebook, Man Up New Zealand. It was a call from a partner reaching out for help for her, her man. She said, my partner's not in a good place, and we need help now. She responded and said, he's on his way to Hormai train station. So I got on the message and messaged the uh, overseer uh, in Manurewa and said, look, we need to get somebody down to Hormai train station immediately. When I got the message, uh, I knew I needed to act straight away. When I rang Jason and he picked up, all I could hear in the background was train sirens. I asked Jason, are you okay, bro? And he said to me, do you really want to know? And I said to him, yeah, absolutely. And he said, I'm trying to build the courage up to jump in front of this train. He was telling me, you need to come off the, the platform now and meet me over here. And I was like, uh, you know, somebody I don't even know asking me to do something that I didn't want to do. Uh, but it was just the gentleness in his voice, you know, and I could hear through his voice, you know, through the phone, that he was actually genuinely actually uh, cared about what was going on for me. I came down, went off the platform, 
um, went over, waited for him. I was just standing there, it was raining and I was just crying. When I arrived, I just, I remember putting my, my window down, my passenger window down, and I just looked at him and I said, come over, jump in the car. And as he was walking over, he just started breaking down and just, he sat in my car and we actually both cried. Um, we said nothing for the first five minutes to each other. We just, I understood what he had gone through. Uh, I understood the mindset that he was in because I've been in that situation before. He allowed me to be me. He allowed me to cry. Yeah, that was powerful. I've never ever had anything happen like that in my life. Five weeks later, I had the opportunity to uh, see Jason share and talk about uh, his life post this event. And it's just amazing, you know, to see the transformation of the description of that first message that I received from his partner of somebody that was uh, broken, somebody that was really hurt, and somebody that was at a point where they wanted to kill themselves. To actually see a man standing on his feet and articulating so well and so, uh, you know, uh, appreciative of uh, Angus's help, man up support, and now he's an advocate of man up. And I think uh, there's only great things going forward for Jason. The change in him is just so visible and so dramatic that the Jason that I met at the train tracks versus the Jason that I know now are two totally different people. And it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal to, to sit there and watch the transformation take place. Being part of Man Up, uh, I haven't got all the tools yet, but the tools that I have got so far, they've helped me. Within myself, I feel part of something real. There's real love, there's real respect, there's real loyalty. If you're watching this, just realise that you're never alone. Don't believe the negative thoughts that are in your head that tell you that you're alone because you're not. It only takes out one call, one reach out, and you'll have a whole brotherhood and sisterhood and an awesome church around you. I'm standing today because somebody cared. We stand because we care.